Topping the news at 7 on this Saturday. Officials provide details on electronic travel authorization needed when going to the UK as of January 8 next year. Prime Minister examines unique opportunities while protecting the nature reserve of Redonda. Police charge three individuals in connection with separate larceny incidents. And LIAT 2020 provides update on its continued regional expansion as busy Yuletide season approaches. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail starts right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the ABS Evening News on this Saturday. A warm welcome especially to those joining us on our various online platforms. My name is Garfield Burford, and we begin with a major developing story this evening. And it is that as the date draws closer, when an electronic travel authorization or ETA will be needed, when heading to the United Kingdom, officials are providing more details this evening. Well, here is more, because officials have provided clarity for individuals who are planning their next trip to the UK. Meanwhile, High Commissioner to the UK, Karen Mayhill, is making it clear the ETA arrangement is not meant to make the lives of Antiguans and Barbudans difficult. Our story this evening from Myrtle Bruno Hodge. The requirements for travel to the United Kingdom will change in just over a month. If you are considering traveling there, you need to know crucial information before booking your flight. Come January 8, 2025, Antiguans and Barbudans, along with other non-UK and Irish citizens, will require an electronic travel authorization or ETA to travel to the UK. Aaron Walton of the UK Future Borders and Immigration System program explains what this means for travelers. This isn't a new idea. Places like the USA and Canada already have the idea of a permission to travel and it's already been in train here in the UK. So it's not new, but we've just added different things to it to expand the permission to travel. So what that essentially means is that British and Irish citizens, for instance, will not require any sort of permission to come to the UK. The reason somebody, somebody will need a permission will be very much dependent on their circumstances, the reason for coming to the UK, and also their nationality. Applications for ETAs for eligible non-European travellers like Antiguans and Barbudans open from the 27th of November. If you need an ETA, Make sure you apply online before booking any travel to the UK. Once granted, it will be valid for multiple journeys over two years or until the passport you applied with expires, whichever is sooner. When you check in for your journey, you may not be allowed to board without a valid ETA. As the ETA is digitally linked to your passport, you do not need to show a paper copy. Residents who purchased a ticket prior to November 28 and are scheduled to travel to the UK before January 8 will not be impacted by this new arrangement. Applications for Nationals of Antigua and Barbuda opened yesterday. The travel, the six-week travel window starts from then and finishes on the 8th of January. So in between that time, if somebody from Antigua and Barbuda is planning to travel to the UK, if they don't have their ETA, it probably won't be a big deal because the airline won't look for the ETA during that travel window. Antigua and Barbuda's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Karen Mayhill, says the ETA is not meant to make the lives of Antiguans and Barbudans difficult. It's there for the UK's um, border sovereignty um, concerns and we can easily access it. Walton and High Commissioner Hill were part of an information session on Thursday organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Antigua and Barbuda High Commission in London. Myrtle Brunner Hodge for ABS News. Myrtle, thanks and rest assured ABS will provide you with extensive reportage on this issue as the countdown continues towards uh, the effecting, uh, coming to effect of that arrangement. Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown says unique opportunities could be in the offing on Redonda 
while preserving its nature reserve status. The Prime Minister made those comments during the Brown and Brown show on Point FM this afternoon, fresh from a visit to the island of Redonda on Friday. He says the island could present opportunities for nature-based tourism without disrupting its unique ecology. The head of government said this, said this presents an opportunity for the country to truly be regarded as a tri-island state instead of just a twin-island state. Meanwhile, the environmental awareness group, the EAG, used a social media post to express its delight at taking Prime Minister Brown and Chief of Defence Staff Brigadier Talbert Benjamin on their first visit to Redonda. The EAG says it's, the team had, quote, an amazing time showcasing the beauty of Redonda's restoration efforts and sharing upcoming plans for the newly protected area, end quote. Now, the group also says, quote, we strongly believe in the power of partnership and collaboration, and we can't wait to see what we will achieve with the continued support of the government of Antigua Barbuda and the, the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force as we work together to establish the Redonda Ecosystem Reserve, end quote. Well, three individuals will appear before a magistrate next week charged in separate incidents of larceny, 25-year-old Aisha Chidik of Grace Farm is accused of breaking into a man's home, stealing a metal safe, laptop computer, a mobile phone, and several other electronic items valued at close to $5,000. That incident occurred on November 28 at Factory Road. Meanwhile, 20-year-old Jamali uh, Sadiqi Sims of Hatton was arrested and charged with breaking into a home at Lower Gambles, stealing one PlayStation 4 game console, one television set, a mobile phone, a laptop, a laptop computer, clothing, and other items. That incident occurred on the 24th of November. Meanwhile, 29-year-old Kadeem Morrissey of Golden Grove is charged with pradial larceny for allegedly stealing a bunch of green bananas from a property at Casada Gardens on November 28. Of course, we'll follow that story and keep you across it. Now, more on a story that we told you about uh, last evening because, of course, uh, the country uh, can, or the police force continuing to investigate uh, the latest uh, traffic death. Antigua Barbuda recording its fourth traffic fatality since the start of 2024. Uh, the victim in that crash, a 60-year-old man, he was reportedly driving a white Toyota motor car along Sir George Walt Highway yesterday morning, about 6.30 uh, in the morning when the incident happened. He reportedly lost control of the vehicle while traveling from west to east. He collided with a into a utility pole. As a result, he sustained multiple injuries and was transported to the Celeste Bird Medical Center in an unresponsive state. He later succumbed to his injuries and of course, this is the fourth traffic death since, or, or tra crash-related death since the start of 2024. Police continuing those investigations, and they are urging motorists to drive within the speed limit and to ensure that they follow all the rules of the road. Now, Antigua-based Liat 2020 says flights to Tortola in the British Virgin Islands will commence shortly. The carrier was scheduled to have had its maiden flight yesterday, but head of the commercial department, Elena Dyer, explains why there has been a postponement. It's solely just for maintenance. We have to make sure that it's the right aircraft heading into beef. Every single um, airport has different restrictions. Um, so we're all set and ready to go. We have our promotional bags. We have all of our executives heading down. Well, she adds the airline is considering next Sunday for flights to begin into the BVI as part of its regional expansion thrust. Meanwhile, the airline has ramped up marketing efforts with a 25% discount on ticket purchases for today only. The offer is valid until 11.59 p.m. and applies to flights to any of the carrier's destinations. The airline hosted a pop-up promotion at Epicure and Fine Foods today to provide the discount opportunity to shoppers. We have a special class sale, 25% off all routes. Um, the travel dates up until January 31st. But you come down, Epicurean, speak to one of our lovely team members and get ready to fly and soar with Leah 2020. Well, Dara says prospective passengers who missed them at Epicurean today you can also call reservations at 713-5428 to speak with a sales representative. Meanwhile, Liat 2020 will be expanding its routes even further as it prepares for the busy Christmas season. Beef, we recommend beef for the Spain once everything is cleared by December 19th. Jamaica, December 20th with an asterisk there, but we come in 
we have a special charter to Santo Domingo, December 14th and December 21st. So our DR families come out, give us a call, special prices, trying to get everyone home for Christmas. Well, today is the final day of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season and the region is, is breathing a sigh of relief collectively. Uh, the season has left a trail of death and a destruction with hurricane barrel setting records barreling through the southeastern Caribbean as the earliest Atlantic Basin Category 5 hurricane on record that, of course, in July. Antigua Barbuda was spared the worst of the tropical cyclone activity this hurricane season. The season has again brought into sharp focus the devastating effects of climate change as warmer seas fuel stronger cyclones. We'll have more in the weather report and forecast later in our broadcast. As of course, uh, the hurricane season comes to an end today. It of course started on the 1st of June. But of course, even though it officially ends today, you still want to maintain your vigilance. Well, the Gemini's Moods of Pan hosted two steel pan workshops for the nation's young people this week as part of the celebration of its 25th anniversary. The event at the John E. St. Louis Finance and Conference Center were well received by participants, as our Kim Emanuel Beard reports. The workshop saw scores of students from several schools across the island in attendance. A rendition of the national anthem on steel pan was played by a student from the Antigua Grammar School to get things off to a start. Executive member of Gemini's Moods of Pan, Samuel Roberts, hosted the proceedings and reminded attendees of the importance of preserving the steel pan as part of our culture for generations to come. It is important that we continue it. And how do we do that? We do that by passing on our knowledge to the future generations. Believe it or not, the young people gathered here, you have a great part to play in Pan in Antigua and Barbuda in the future. Captain of the West Indies Oil Company's Gemini's Steel Orchestra, Joseph Jawatu Henry, reflected on the first Mood Pan initiative in 1999. He explained it was a fundraiser that should have been a one-off event, but it was so well attended, it had to become an annual staple. But everybody then realized what Pat can do. Not that we didn't know. We who played Pat knew what, you know, what we can do. But for those like the, the audience, they realized, it was, wow. And since that, and after that, we knew that we had to do a second one. A second one has resulted in 20. 20, um, 25 years, 20, 26 shows. Henry went further to encourage the young people in attendance to embrace the steel pan now it's widely accepted, unlike his generation that had to fight to play the instrument. Visiting from the University of Trinidad and Tobago with his team of facilitators was Assistant Professor of Music, Sion Gomez. We are panists. We have fun in the pan yards. You know, we love music, but more to that, our job, our mission is to ensure that what we do continues. So when we go, one of you will take lead and it goes on and on and on and on. He motivated the students to consider a career in music and to ponder on the information disseminated at the workshop. Reporting for ABS News, this is Kim Emanuel Beard. Kim, thanks. Now this evening we share another story of a survivor of gender-based violence as the 16 days of activism against this chronic scourge continue. Here's our Kelisha Humphreys who's been tracking these stories. Our next interviewee will be referred to as Shanti, and her image will not be used in the telling of her story. After courting for two years, Shanti married a man who by all accounts was generous with his time and love, a man whose good heart no one doubted. Everything was fine until I realized, and I stumbled upon it just for chance in the house that there was alcohol, cocaine, and weed involved. Actual hitting did not start until my first child. 
So until then, it was like verbal abuse. Ashanti fought back the first time her husband got physical and left soon after, but she returned after a year believing he had changed. She was also convinced it was extremely important for children to be raised in a home with both parents. You are just living in this constant state of flight or fright, which is projected onto your children. You, so in other words, you're transferring generational abusive habits. You're paying it forward because your children are living that trauma. After five years, Ashanti left. She gave her husband no warning, ensuring a police officer and others were present as she moved out and later divorced him. It wasn't easy. Um, some days there was no food, some days there was no ride, and some days wondering, you know, did I do the right thing, especially I lost my job. I'm trying to figure out how to negotiate. You know, because no, no, no money come in there. She recounts extremely difficult periods, but maintained her faith. Through it all, the thing that kept me, otherwise I would have killed myself, was my faith. If I did not have faith in myself and have faith in a higher power, if that was not resolute, I wouldn't be here. Ashanti says she wants victims to know that they are enough. And even if it's sometimes difficult to find support, there will be people looking out for them, even if it's just a few. Kilisha Humphreys, ABS News. Kilisha, thanks. And of course, uh, we continue those stories, uh, seven stories of uh, strength and courage and resilience from survivors of gender-based violence. And of course, uh, if you or anyone you know is affected by this issue of gender-based violence, there is also the uh, Directorate of Gender Affairs and the Support and Referral Center, or SARC. Well, that's where we take us out of a look at national developments, turning down to the weather report and forecast. Joining us this evening is Bernal Simon. He'll tell us whether or not the weekend weather will continue to be garden variety. Good evening to you, Bernal. What's major? Mm -hmm. Good evening, Garfield. Well, pretty dry conditions so far for the weekend, but going forward, in the next couple of days, we could see that trade wind, the early December trade wind, pushing across some low-level patches, so we could indeed see quite a bit of shower activity over the next couple of days. But we'll have more details after this short break. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. When the skies are clear and the winds are calm, we often forget how unpredictable Mother Nature can be. But when a hurricane strikes, it's the strength of your home that matters most. Whether you are preparing for your first storm or looking to upgrade your current protection, Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection has got you covered. Our expert team handles everything from custom design to professional installation, ensuring your home is as strong as it is beautiful. Call today for a free consultation. Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection, built strong to weather any storm. Welcome back, and as we divert into our satellite picture for this evening, we saw relatively dry and stable conditions across most of the Eastern Caribbean for today. However, just to the east of the islands, we see these, these patches of low-level clouds pushing in associated as the high pressure ridge, with the winds associated with the high pressure ridge continues to transport these shallow low-level patches across the area, and this is indeed is expected to be the trend over the next couple of days. As these Trade winds transport these shallow low-level patches. We're looking at partly cloudy to cloudy conditions with a heightened chance of showers moving across the islands over the next 24 hours and, in fact, over the next couple of days. These conditions will, will persist right through the island chain, even across the southern Caribbean, as you continue to see these shallow low-level patches moving across the islands. So over the next couple of days, partly cloudy conditions with brief cloudy spells and a heightened chance of some showers moving across the island. So for forecast conditions for tomorrow, Sunday, 
We're looking at generally partly cloudy conditions with periods of increased cloudiness and a heightened chance of showers across the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico and the British Virgin Islands, across Barbados and also the southern Windward Islands of Trinidad and Tobago. Fate of partly cloudy conditions currently on the outside with a current temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit as winds come from the east at about 12 miles per hour at this time. Overnight, periods of increased cloudiness and a 70% or high chance of some overnight showers developing. A minimum tonight of 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit can be expected as winds come from the east at about 8 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, of course, Antigua and Barbuda, partly cloudy conditions with periods of increased cloudiness once again and a 70% chance of showers mainly during the morning. Maximum could get as high as 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit as winds come from the east at about 12 to 21 miles per hour, gusting even higher over open waters and also in elevated areas. Our sunrise time will be 6.20 a.m. and the sun will set at 5.32 p.m. Looking at marine conditions, seas will be moderate to rough, Waves getting as high as 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters, with swells getting as high as 1.5 meters or 5 feet. Therefore, a high surf advisory remain in place, mainly for the northern and eastern coastlines, over the next 24 hours. Now, extended weather forecast for this evening. Well, as mentioned earlier, over the next couple of days, we will see partly cloudy to cloudy conditions, with a heightened chance of showers Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday, as those shallow low level patches continue to traverse the area on that moderate to fresh trade wind flow. Winds will come from the east at 12 to 21 miles per hour during that four day period with higher gusts over open waters and also in elevated areas. Maximum of 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit and minimum of 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit can be expected during that four day period. Seas will range between 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters, with swells getting as high as 5 feet, so a high surf advisory will be in effect over the next couple of days. And here ends the weather package for this Saturday evening. We go back to Garfield for the continuation of tonight's news. Really appreciate it, Bernard. Thank you so much. So some rain in the forecast. We look forward to those showers, of course. And yes, of course, indeed. it's also the end of the hurricane season, Bernard. Mm -hmm. So we uh, have a bit of a light celebration for that, but we have to... Of course, continue to monitor the weather, yes, despite indeed. the fact that the hurricane season is ending mm -hmm. today. Brilliant Simon from the Met Office, ensuring that we are your weather headquarters when the, when, when the weather is in news. Trust us for continued updates. This is the point at which we say farewell to those joining us on Facebook. We appreciate your company, as always. Online viewing, though, continues on our website, abstvradio.com. Jack Matthew is up next with the sporting developments. And Jack, it's cricket, lovely cricket. Was it a lovely day for the West End? Good evening to you.